Metal Jesus here, and I am back with Kinsey. Hello, and today we're going to be talking about a buyer's guide for the original Xbox. So that's accessories, hardware, and some of our favorite games. Let's take a look. All right, so let's start with the hardware. And again, this is meant to be sort of a buying guide in case you're out like a, at a garage sale or a pawn shop. And you just kind of want to know what to get into if you've never actually owned an original Xbox. Mm -hmm. And this guy <laughs> is the original Xbox. Yes. Um, it's one of the first consoles that has an internal hard drive. It was, uh, I believe it was a 10 gig drive, but you had like eight gigs available to oh, you. Oh, yeah. Um, but what's actually, it's funny, you just reminded me is that I was watching a, um, it was a, a podcast where they were talking, it was original creators of the Xbox. Mm -hmm. And one of the really interesting things is that it's because they put a hard drive in here that games like Halo were even possible. Because, That's crazy, yeah. Yeah, because it needed to be able to stream to its hard drive all of its extra data and stuff like that. So it was definitely a very revolutionary con you know, console. Definitely, and it also eliminated the need for memory cards. Oh, for that's the most right. Part. No, that, that's true. Yeah. Actually, I, I think I have a memory card, but I've never used it. I know people who like kept their gamer tag on there, so they can take oh. it to their friend's house mm. or move saves, just things like that. Yeah. But even some games on the Xbox are so big and revolutionary, they won't fit on the memory card anyways. That's a really good point. So again, it, you know, there when this came out, it was competing with say the the GameCube, the PlayStation mm -hmm. Two, the Dreamcast, yep. and all of those needed a memory card. This really doesn't. I mean, in which I it's pretty awesome. So another thing to know about this is that uh, the DVD drives on this were known to fail in the original couple sort of versions of it. I remember them getting stuck closed, stuck open, stuck everywhere. Yeah, and also not being <laughs> able to read discs and things mm -hmm. like that. So this one here actually is one of uh, an earlier model and it, it it's basically got a, uh, a Thompson drive. I just happen to know the name of it because um, it essentially has a different sort of mold to it. And when you open up the drive, you can see that it actually is a little bit narrower than some of the other ones. I have some other Xboxes here, but if you're out and about and you buy an Xbox and it doesn't open, it's probably because you have an older drive. Yeah. Um, there's a bunch of stuff to sort of know about the different versions of the Xbox. Uh, I'm not an expert on it, but I'll include links down below so people can kind of, you know, go learn about it. Uh, what are some other things about it? Well, well, I know the back here. <laughs> So tell me about the, the power. Like, um, What's nice about this is it doesn't have one of those bulky external power bricks like the GameCube. The or 360. E or even the 360, which <laughs> yeah. is gigantic. It's almost the size of this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it has more of just a standard cord. It's yeah. really similar to like just the regular PS2 fat cord. Which is really nice, again, if you're out and you find one at a garage sale and you don't have to look for an external power mm -hmm. you know, cord, you just pick it up and go and it's, yep. it's pretty much self-contained. The other thing that's really nice about it is it has, every one of them has an ethernet cable in it, which again, at the time was pretty revolutionary. Um, I, most people, or not most people, but a lot of people, especially in rural areas, were still on dial-up in 2000, 2001. I was. Yeah. <laughs> I it, didn't have no broadband. Oh, really? That's, yeah. that's interesting. So, well, and I think that was pretty common, but again, Microsoft was looking forward and they're like, no, eventually everyone will need ethernet and broadband to play online games. And mm -hmm. so it was very forward thinking, which is pretty awesome. And it made it so you could like hook up a bunch of Xboxes with your friends. Oh, that's right. And we were doing that. So it was wonderful. And because this was so powerful, uh, another thing is the video. Mm -hmm. So the, the game supported, a lot of them um, supported HD out. So yep. they had, it has a slot for the component cables or AV, you yeah. can use that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but there are a couple of games that allow you to do 780 or even 1080i. That's right. So I have a bunch of them here. So, um, well, I guess I should say that almost every single Xbox game does, almost all of them do 480p, mm -hmm. which on a, an, a newer HD television looks pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. So, but there's some that even support higher than that. And it's not upscaling. The games are actually outputting at that resolution. So here's a couple of, of the ones that are at 720p. Um, and then you also have Enter the Matrix is one of the few that actually is outputting to 1080i, which again, back then was pretty, pretty advanced. Yeah. I mean, what I love about the Xbox is that if you are interested in sort of the sixth generation of games, um, this is a awesome console to get because a lot of these third-party games look the best on the system. Mm -hmm. 
it's pretty awesome. And one thing with all the HD games is to be careful. If you put it in, you're like, well, that doesn't look so good. Um, you have to actually go into the Xbox's settings on the dashboard and change the default to what your TV can do. Interesting, you know, I, I, it's funny you mention that. I also read that there is a button combination that you can do when it's booting up to boot mm -hmm. the menu itself into 480p. Oh. A little bit of a higher resolution. I'll have to include that in the, the notes below, but there's there's definitely a lot to, to love about the original Xbox. It's funny though because it kind of gets a bad rap. It does. <laughs> it's probably because it just didn't take off the rest of the world, but. We, we love it here, so. Yeah, we, and also, I mean, let's be honest, it's not the most attractive <laughs> console. Although I don't really have a problem with it necessarily, <laughs> but but it is definitely kind of like a, you know, uh, I don't know. It's just a big black box. The big black box. <laughs> now you have a really interesting one here. What is, do you know much about this? This is the EA Sports Edition. Oh, okay. And what's really cool about Xbox is like, like the 64 has like tons of colors and they're mm -hmm. all really fun and they're they are worth a little bit yeah but xbox there's a couple that aren't as rare like i mean like the halo one right and stuff like that still awesome yeah um but they also have some crazy rare ones like this ea sports like the crystal like the mountain dew so it's kind of a fun system to collect for because it has a lot of those almost grail level items yeah that's true because I, you know, when I go out and look, you, you never find anything other than the black. Mm -hmm. You know, because that just seems like what was what was made. But yeah. but there's definitely you know some of those like you mentioned the the Mountain Dew one. I mean, it's it's a crazy color of green. It almost yeah. looks like a green screen. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's so weird looking. And then you also mentioned like there's a I think there's like a Tony Hawk where it's got like the, the it's splatter. really cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a Hello Kitty one. Oh yeah. <laughs> in Asia and it's adorable. Oh, <laughs> Panzer Dragoon Orta one is mm -hmm. super collectible as well. All right, so now we're gonna go over some of the accessories and starting with the controllers. Yes. And this is the Duke. The big old Duke. So a lot of people said that it was the Duke was the thing that kind of kept them out of Japan, or at least one of the things, right? Because mm -hmm. it's so big. It's gigantic. And actually, when this first came out, I got so used to it that when the S-Type came out, I still preferred this one. <laughs> yeah, so that's the original black one, and, mm -hmm. and you actually have this one. I feel it's like amazing. I should own this one, though, because I have the... the <laughs> no, let's trade. <laughs> kind of, the matching Xbox. This is... I had no idea this even existed. Yeah, that's the translucent green Duke, and you don't see them at no. all. I, I, they're I, expensive now, and they're beautiful. So. It is, it's awesome. <laughs> but it is a really large controller. I actually find it to be very comfortable. I have huge hands, so I, I just think... One of the weird things about it is that you notice that these are kind of like, not, not tiered, but they're like oblong, essentially. Yeah. These little buttons here. They can't be like Nintendo with them round buttons. <laughs> well, they eventually went round, right, where they went to the S controller. Mm -hmm. So they had so many complaints about the controller, they decided to do uh, what they called the S controller, mm -hmm. which um, is a really nice controller, actually. It's, it's more compact. They changed a little bit of the buttons here with mm -hmm. the, uh, the start and back. Um, plus, they, they also... Yeah, they made these colored, didn't they? No, or they, I guess they were black and white before. Mm -hmm. They're just in a different spot. I see. Mm -hmm. Another nice controller, and actually I feel like the, the 360 controller kind of got based on this a little bit. Yeah, it's just like a smoother looking one. Yeah, but it's definitely a nice controller. Um, oh, and the other thing I, we should probably mention too, one of the, the really big innovations of the Xbox was the breakaway cable. Mm -hmm. The dongle. Is that, what, is that what it's called? That's what I call it. <laughs> it's a dongle or a tail. Yeah. What do you want to say? All I know is that the first time that I actually, uh, I was getting up to like to go to the door, like somebody rang the doorbell mm -hmm. and I completely ripped it out and it like, it didn't pull the Xbox off. It, it actually popped that. Yeah. I was like, brilliant. That's smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised like more haven't done that. Yeah, it's true. Although I will say that um, you do have to be careful again when you're out buying these because sometimes it will be missing. I've actually bought yeah. several of them where it's like, oh, it doesn't have a little dongle. Goal. <laughs> yeah, most of the time I feel, well, at least with my luck, <laughs> I'm like, yes, oh. I know. <laughs> it's true. So, okay, and then we have what I consider to be one of the best controllers. Yeah. That is the Logitech wireless controller. This is an amazing controller. It, it so um, it takes four bat, no, two batteries, that's right. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, you being Vanna. <laughs> um, and this lasts forever. Like, Again, in, in like, what, 50, 40 hours, something like mm -hmm. that. It's definitely an awesome controller. One thing to note, though, is that it does need this part of it. So mm -hmm. it, this little kind of adapter thing, <laughs> like, which I like this a lot because they put the memory card slots down here. Mm -hmm. So there, it makes it so this can be streamlined with the exception of if you're trying to use a headset. <laughs> oh, interesting. Then, a long quote. That's true, because it doesn't have the place for the headset. Mm -hmm. Huh. 
Interesting. The more you know. Yeah, the more you know. <laughs> um, some third party ones here I just want to show real quickly. I found this one. It's an official Seahawks one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really a big sports fan, but I was like, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, got to represent. And then this one I think is hilarious. So this is a power pad. It's technically slightly bigger than the original, believe it or not. What? It's ridiculous. See, like like literally these little, little <laughs> handles right here actually go out more. You know what's funny though, is that this is so big. Like I was like, how big is this compared to like the PSP? Like it's almost as wide as an actual PSP. What? It's crazy. <laughs> You know what? That Duke wasn't quite big enough. I know. It's, let's make it bigger. <laughs> um, although, if we're talking big controllers, the Xbox did have probably the biggest controller of all mm -hmm. time. Uh, do I have a copy of it around here? Well, in, in my storage area, Steel Battalion. 40 buttons, mech goodness in your living room? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, crazy controller, uh, but I, I, I love it. I, it's so over the top. I think it's Yeah, it's, it's awesome. really fun to play. If you ever get a chance to play it, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, and then finally, I just want to mention the light gun here. Pretty cool, actually, light gun. So this is the, I believe this is Mad Cats. Yeah. Yep. And there's a couple games that support it, like House of the Dead and some other ones, but pretty awesome. So very cool. All right. So next, we're going to talk about some of the games. Mm -hmm. And these aren't necessarily hidden gems, top 10, whatever. Right. Um, these are just games that if you have an Xbox, you should probably own these. All right, so I'm gonna go first here. I love this game so much. This is SSX3. Now, I talk about this game a lot because mm -hmm. I love it so much. I'm not really a big sports guy, but I do like the kind of X sports, kind of, you know, snowboarding. I don't know what it is, but they nailed it with this. And the mm -hmm. Xbox has the best version of it, especially if you've modded your Xbox and you copy it to the hard drive, it loads just like that. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely awesome. Go check it out. And speaking of extreme sports. Extreme! <laughs> Next is Jet Set Radio Future, and this is kind of a remake of the Jet Grind Radio mm. on the Dreamcast, and they've done some really cool stuff with this one. They've kind of merged some of the levels so that way it has almost open world feeling. Not quite. Mm -hmm. Almost. Um, and it has some really awesome multiplayer modes as well. There's like some turf battles where you have to like tag the walls and try to tag more walls into your opponents. There's races. It's so much fun. You were just playing this this morning. Mm -hmm. I wanted to like refresh my memory a little bit on it and then I just played it all morning and it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and it has an amazing soundtrack. When I first played it, I went out and I just bought the soundtrack. It's so awesome. So good. All right, next up is an Xbox exclusive. That is Crimson Skies High Road to Revenge. For one, uh, this has to be in our video because Drunk Master Paul, uh, well, this is his pick. Yeah, <laughs> he loves this game. He's played it to death, and I, it, it's it's such a really fun game. It's a how you describe this? It's like a flight arcade shooter thing, yeah. but it's awesome. It's really fun. I mean, gunning people down. There's like uh, um, there's stunts. There's there's all these aerial kind of tracks that you have to do. I don't, I don't know. I'm not seeing it right, but definitely a great game. Highly recommended. Definitely. And of course, we never heard of this before. Yeah. What? What is hey, Halo. Halo? Wasn't that for Mac originally? Yeah, what, what's probably that? Came on the Xbox so weird. <laughs> <laughs> this game, like this, is the reason I bought an Xbox to begin with. And Halo One is amazing. I still think it's the best one in of all of the Halo games. <gasps> I know, controversy, <laughs> but it's so good. Yeah. Like I played it co-op dozens of times so far in my life, and it's great. Well, it it, it proved that you could really do a great shooter mm -hmm. on a console. I mean, obviously, GoldenEye was one of the first, but yeah. this one was also hugely revolutionary. It's awesome. And the second one is the best-selling Xbox, uh, original Xbox game of all time. Mm -hmm. This one was one of the first games I waited in line for for a midnight release. Oh, really? Because mm -hmm. it was like, all I did was play it online in college. I don't know how I graduated, <laughs> but that's all I did. I'm sure a lot right. of people are probably wondering that, too. It's like, yeah, it was so popular. It was amazing. Yeah. So, the next one is another Sega game here, and it's an amazing exclusive, uh, Panzer Dragon Orta. Mm -hmm. So this is an on-rail shooter, and this got its start, I guess, on the Saturn, right? Mm -hmm. um, but they moved it over to the Xbox, and this is probably one of the best versions of that game. It looks beautiful even today. It's so good. <laughs> so good. Um, again, it's just an on-rail shooter unlike any other. The one thing to know about this one is, and this kind of gets back to the hardware, if this game doesn't start up or look right, it's because you have the last version of the Xbox. Oh. Microsoft switched the video chip on the very last version of the Xbox, and it doesn't play. Actually, it, it, it may have problems with this, and also uh, the Jet, jet, jet Ryan, what, what's the name of the Jet Set Radio Future. I always get it mixed up with the original. <laughs> <laughs> 
But if those two don't play, it's because you have a, the very last version of the Xbox. So something to keep in mind. Jerks. Yeah, you have to change the resolution, <laughs> so. All right, and next up is actually one of my favorite games on the Xbox. Oh, yeah. And it's Fable. Yeah, when this came out, this was huge. I mean. It's amazing. And at first, I, it took a while for me to play it, just because it didn't look that great. It looked kind of cartoony. It was different than normal role-playing games at yeah. the time. It was so good though. When I yeah. finally sat down and played it, I definitely you could play good or evil, mm -hmm. and your character looks so badass yeah. when you play it. I evil. always play evil. It's so good. <laughs> it's know. so worth it. Yeah. But it's amazing, and it's so long, and like it's it's a world you can definitely get lost in. Yeah, I totally agree. Next is one of my all-time favorite arcade racing games, and mm -hmm. the Xbox has one of the best versions. That is Outrun Two, and I have a bunch of Sega games here. I don't know how that worked <laughs> out, but. Dude, this is a great game. Um, you know, the original Outrun was an arcade game, and I like it. It's okay. Uh, this is, I like this better. Um, and just because of the way it handles, also the little mini challenges in here, where yeah. you have to try to get the hearts and all that stuff. Oh my God, I just love this game so much. So, highly recommended. All right, and next is Morrowind. If you played this game, you knew this was your life for like a really long time. <laughs> What's cool about this is that this didn't come out on the PlayStation 2, didn't come out on, on the GameCube. It was only mm -hmm. out on the original Xbox and PC, of course. Yeah. But, but uh, if you want to play it on a console, this was it. Yep. And it's one of the first Elder Scroll games to even come to the console. Yep. So like, if this never were to come to the console, we probably wouldn't have something like Skyrim That's you know, true. on the new console. So. And this was such a big deal, too. I remember mm -hmm. when this came out, so many people were excited about it. And it was just so... Talk about open world. Like, when the first time I played this game, because I also played uh, the Xbox version as well, I was just like, where do I go? What do I do? Like, yeah. it was so open world. I didn't, it was amazing. Yeah. You know? And, like, if you're a console gamer like I am, like, PC, like, did more of the open world exploratory stuff. Right. But, like, this was, like, a brand new thing to me. Yeah. And it was so beautiful. And it's wonderful. And if you get the Game of the Year edition, it also comes with all the DLC. Ah, that's cool. All right. Next up is one of my favorite arcade first-person shooters, that is Time Splitters Future Perfect. It's so much fun. <laughs> you, you know, I, so I was thinking, it's like, well, okay, do I do Time Splitters 2 or Future Perfect? But Future Perfect is mm -hmm. perfect. This yes. is such a great game. It, it It's the last one so far in the series, um, but they ended it on a high note. What's cool about this game is that it has kind of this story that's, that's weaving through it, and it's funny because you'll run into previous versions of yourself, <laughs> and you'll see yourself, and you'll have conversations, and it's it just this crazy sort of wacky, uh, shooter. I don't know. There's something about this game. I just love it. So, uh, me and Drunken Master Paul play this a lot. All right. And next is some games that are very close to my heart. Yeah. So, KOTOR and games. KOTOR 2. Yep. Bioware Masterpieces. Yep. Well, yep. this one's not Bioware. It's <laughs> Obsidian. <laughs> right. So, well, th so that brings up a good point. Is that, so, the original version was, I think, perfect in every way. It's like It's so wonderful. It, it's so amazing. Like It blew me away. It, 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 mm -hmm. For a long time, it's, it's actually probably still up in my top 10 of like favorite role-playing games of all time. Mm -hmm. It's just so awesome. Speaking of playing bad, you know, good or evil, in that game you can be evil as well. It's fun. It's real <laughs> evil too. Like, yeah. Um, something about the, be, being a Sith in this game, you're like real bad. Yeah. You're like, oh, by the way, I'm alien racist and terrible. <laughs> <I> like, <know. laughs> You can screw people over in so many ways. Oh, man. <laughs> but now the second game is really interesting. That was made by uh, Obsidian. Mm -hmm. And so it was it was a different company, although they, they make good games. It's a little bit, it feels a little bit unfinished in, in some ways. Mm -hmm. The ending was, was not quite as good as I would have hoped. It seems like they kind of rushed it towards the end. Yeah. Because it just kind of ended. But it was still like really fun to play. Yeah. Had a lot of really interesting improvements on the gameplay. I, I like them both, so. Yeah, it smoothed out the combat a lot in the mm. second one. So it like, in some ways it felt better to play. Yeah, that's true. So, and they created some super interesting characters in this one. That's true. Mm -hmm. And you could actually turn your characters, uh, their alignment in the second game, mm -hmm. which is really fun. You can make some people Jedis. <laughs> that's right. That's pretty cool. All right, and then finally for this video, uh, Stubbs the Zombie, a rebel without a pulse. So this all this also was exclusive to the original Xbox. It actually uses the Halo engine, but it's a third person kind of action brawler sort of mm -hmm. game where you play a zombie in a kind of like alternate 1950s. It's so cool. <laughs> Dude, this game is fun and it's wacky too. Like there's a spoiler alert, there's a uh, there's a level in here where you're trying to poison the uh, the city's water system and you basically as a zombie pee into the water system <laughs> and literally it has you aiming <laughs> <laughs> as you're poisoning the water it's it's that kind of game so it's awesome uh, it made me laugh many many times highly recommended 
I love the original Xbox. I mean, I was really excited to do this video mm -hmm. because uh, it's one of it's one of the parts of my collection where I I love it because a lot of the games aren't super expensive yet, mm -hmm. but yet they're the best version of those third party games, and it's got some really interesting exclusives too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So the other thing too I want to mention is that we've done a bunch of hidden gems videos on the original Xbox mm -hmm. that if you are thinking about jumping in and collecting for this, I will put a link up in one of the corners here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming on and doing this. Of course. Anytime. Uh, yes. Thank you guys for watching my channel. Thanks for subscribing and take care. All right. So we're going to talk about the hardware and what you need to know when you are out, like say at a garage sale, or maybe you go to a pawn shop or an expo and you need to know, like, fuck. <laughs> what do you need to know? <laughs> to fuck. <laughs> Not in this video. That's the next one. Yes. I just love it when Kinsey comes over. She's such a cool person and such a great friend. And if you like Kinsey, well, you're in luck because on my channel, we did videos on the GameCube. We did a buying guide. Plus we did Mario hidden gems. Yes, we actually tackled that and tried to come up with some hidden gems of Mario games. We also covered the Nintendo DS and some hidden gems on there, but some other stuff too, like Star Wars collectibles. We also covered the Xbox 360 controller variants, and so much more. Definitely subscribe to my channel and check them out.